Yeah, I give it up for the very funny Kyle Adams, everybody. Kyle Adams. happened recently. I was kissed by a dude <laughs> against my will. And I, I'm, a, I'm a very progressive, straight male. So it was a very conflicted moment for me. How do you react? <laughs> um, he was shit-faced drunk, so I kind of wrote that off that way. And he kind of like, like pushed me really hard in the chest after he kissed me. And uh, it kind of reminded me of the Looney Tunes. You know, when Daffy Duck kisses Elmer Fudd and just fucking shoots him in the face with a gun or something. And then he just, he was off like prancing around like a boxer. And he was just going around humping everybody in the room. Just dry humping them. So I had to write it off, you know. And it, it brings up a lot of things in my head, you know, with homophobia. And for the most part, when people say like really homophobic remarks, I always have something just to fucking like throw a loop towards them. Like, I'll give you an example. Uh, at work, uh, I, I went one day and I was saying, you know, my, my throat really hurts. And, and you realize at work, like a lot of people, they're just going around saying how they're feeling, but they don't have anything to actually say. So obviously the, the yes. smart ass dude hears me say that. And he goes, I know your throat hurts. Shouldn't have been sucking all them dicks. Comes around the corner, pop, pops his head in and says that. And I say, you know, you'd think when they come down my throat, it'd be soothing, but it just burns. <laughs> so I have to I have to keep people like throwing them for a loop because I mean that's that's how you get people thinking. Um, I I think an interesting concept would be if King Arthur was a homo homophobe. You know, he invented the round table, you guys, and the round table was invented so that all of his compatriots could like sit and could make eye contact with each other. And uh, I think that's where also the circle jerk was born from. <laughs> you know, they didn't want to be gay about it. You know, but here's the thing. I hope that they at least had the common decency to take off their metal gauntlets before they started the circle jerk, because that's not you know very sensual. It's kind of like a cheese grater on a penis. <laughs> uh, the most homophobic thing though, and this this is just crazy, because habitually homophobes are really like homoerotic. They like they just can't help it. Like uh, one good example is uh, wrestling toys. You know, rednecks love wrestling. And what do their kids play with? Wrestling toys. And wrestling toys are the most homoerotic fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. Dudes with pecs that just jut out, so you can rub your thumbs on them, <laughs> you know? And they're wearing little like spanky pants, and like half of them are wearing like BDSM material. Like, you know? it's, it's, it fucking blows my mind. It's like, it's like don't be such a little, Little sissy boy, go play with your wrestling toys. You know, little little Cletus is putting them in, in his mouth, <laughs> sucking on the bicep. Just, just fucked up world we live in. Um, I think I was saying before is uh, at work, people, you know, they say how they're really feeling sometimes, and it slips out. Um, there's we basically when I greet someone at work, I'm a server. We basically have to be like, how's it going? And then we can see, okay, maybe this girl's a little pissed off tonight, so we don't ask her for help or whatever. You feel the situation. I wish I could be honest when people ask me, how's it going? I would be, you know, I'm trying to find that sweet balance of nihilism where I don't give a shit, but at the same time, I'm trying to better myself. But maybe that's uh, selfish. How's it going with you? And they always chime in, it's going. Which is literally the most depressing thing you can tell another human being. It's going. My life is meaningless. I have no recollection of my days. It's going. I'm a millennial though, we communicate with our t-shirts. <laughs> I got something terrifying to tell you millennials though. Um, do you remember Tamagotchi digital pets? You know, the ones that like they pooped on the screen and look like a little Hershey's kiss? Um, so there's a whole generation of kids who let their Tamagotchi digital pets die wedged in their mom's couch cushions, who now have children wedged in their mom's couch cushions. <laughs> And it's terrifying because at the same time they want to defund Planned Parenthood and I think it's atrocious and you know in Oregon we're at least a little you know like-minded we can band together I think we should start our own organization it'll be like AAA except it'll be quadruple O Oregon's organizing organic orgasms and uh, it will get all the trendy couples in there you know they'll be like you know you use any like pesticides with your abortions like you know from many viewpoints ma'am abortion is pesticide <laughs> My, uh, my father was a hero, though. He got a vasectomy. He saw what he was spitting out, and then he's like, I'm just going to throw my best efforts in the ring. 
and uh, <laughs> let's fade the side. But he um, he ended up getting like bruising on his testicles, like hematomas, like like really bad. And don't ask me how I know about that. That's like a family secret. So. Uh, my mother threw a purple themed Christmas party that year, and all that she had on the screen <coughs> were purple balls, and she hung them in pairs to taunt my father. So I, if I have a dark sense of humor, that's where it comes from. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get all weepy and nostalgic though if I start thinking about the past, you guys. And uh, I, I realize that a lot of us millennials we follow nostalgia like a fucking beacon into the night, and <laughs> it's not it's not a good idea. I'll give you one really good example. There's this movie I love from the 90s called Surf Ninjas. Anyone see Surf Ninjas? Yeah? Kushner did. There's a red-haired guy in Surf Ninjas. And my memory of him was he was nuanced and charismatic. And every scene that had him in it, I just it had my attention. He was the best. 20 years later, I looked that up on IMDb. The fucking red-haired guy is Rob Schneider. I want to emulate Rob Schneider. He was my hero, you guys. Nostalgia will fucking blind me. I'll give you another example here. Um, Super Nintendo. Everyone acts like every single game for Super Nintendo was fantastic. There's some shitty fucking games on Nintendo. Uh, they made a movie game out of every single movie that came out from like the late 80s to the early 90s. They have a Home Alone game. They have a Star Wars game where you fight giant lizards in the desert. I didn't ever see that happen in Star Wars. But. <laughs> My favorite though was What's Eating Gilbert Grape, the game. And uh, it was pretty sweet, you guys. There was, I, knew the, I knew the code by heart. A, B, A, B, start, select to build up his uh, will to live. <laughs> and then my favorite was the bonus level where you drive your truck through an empty town trying to get your mother's diabetes medication. But <laughs> that's pretty sweet. I, uh, you know, I am nostalgic for the past. I am very nostalgic for the past, and I'm getting older, and I realize that. But the future's looking bright. I got a receipt today, you guys, from a dispensary, and it says "thunderfuck" right on the receipt. I, you have no idea how happy that makes me. They're getting a little crazy with the strain names, though. Because right now, I'm flying on Pegasus, 30% THC. And uh, I found this other strain called Banana God. And I don't know about you guys, I'm not religious, but I'm thinking about monotheism on this one. Uh, I have a favorite uh, weed smoking in my car song. Does anyone have that? Does, does anyone smoke in their car? Let's be fucking honest here. Go stay. My favorite song is um, from the 80s. It's called Here in My Car. And I modify the lyrics just a little bit. Here in my car, I smoke weed in my car. It's my buffer from the world in cars. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, 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 I'm very happy that, that weed is, is like, we can fuck. I have two dispensaries down the street I can go to any time. I'm going to the grocery store. <laughs> they have donut holes and Fritos in the fucking lobby for people that are free as well. Uh, I, I have proof, I have documented proof that we have you know, helped my life. And I just want to read this to you. This is from my, my job, actually. It says awesome on it, so I smoke weed, so they got the vernacular correct already. Uh, this is from my manager. Kyle, I wanted to say thank you for the hard work you put in. Also, thanks for working, what we talked, working on what we talked about. And what we talked about was my attitude. And... <laughs> The, uh, the date is interesting on this, October 1st, when the recreational store just came open. I have already noticed a big improvement! <laughs> and it's true, right? It's, it's amazing to me, you know, and, and the future's just getting brighter, you guys. I hope at one point I'm at a job interview, and the guy looks at me and goes, Kyle, you have a great personality. And you have, your references check out and everything, I just want to sign you on right now. But I gotta ask you one personal question. Your eyes are a little red. Are you high or are you tired? I'm both. I'm hired. And I high five them and then we go smoke in the back and talk about how awesome our fucking t-shirts are. <laughs> oh goodness. Um, I don't know who you guys are voting for when the uh, when the elections come around. I don't know if you guys even care at this point. We mean, we got another Bush. We got another Clinton. It's like fucking reboots in Hollywood, reboots in DC, same thing. But I'm I'm going for Bernie Sanders, and I don't care if, if Bernie's just fucking feeding me lines, you know? Because Bernie's like the grandfather I never had. Telling me fairy tales. 
Grandpa Bernie, tell me the one about free college again. <laughs> Can we really rebuild our infrastructure? <laughs> Only if you believe, Kyle. Only if you believe. And remember, you're never too big to fail. Bernie, you're getting a little bit ahead of yourself, aren't you here, buddy? <laughs> Just a tad. Uh, anything's better than um, where I'm from, though. I'm from Florida, and everyone has this misconception that Florida's this magical beach where Mickey Mouse lives and all of your dreams come true. And it's not. It's more like a perpetually 90 degree peninsula covered in bugs and mold, and it's where old people go to die. <laughs> but I realized something. Everyone in Florida is an asshole, and they spend all their time swimming in pools. So Florida is full of chlorinated So if I ever have to go back, I've got a business venture. And it's going to be called Bleach Bumble Beach Tanning Salon. It's going to be the world's first tanning salon and panel bleaching in one. You guys want to hear the jingles in my business venture? Fuck yeah. Come on down to Bleach Bubble Town. We'll turn your brown pots by then your white pots brown. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. A hearty round of applause for the very entrepreneurial. Kyle, I have to say.